Well, Dave, it's really an honor to have you here on the show. Welcome. Thanks very much, Paul. Thank you. Glad to be here. Well, what would you tell a beginning photographer, whether they're younger in age or just an experience? You know, they just picked up a camera. They're, they're sort of hooked. They know this is a pretty cool thing to play with. What do you, what do you tell them? Boy, um, study the great ones and study the young ones. Mm. When did it all start for you? The instructor, who was also the, the head of the department, he encouraged me uh, to come in each week and he just said, I'll give you film and lab time and all these things. I just want you to stay interested. I think you have a lot of potential to be a, a really wow. good photographer. In 1980, I uh, took on uh, an offer to be the official photographer for the U.S. gymnastics uh, teams. The inroad with gymnastics, of course, was a big one for me that led me into the Olympic Games, but it also led me into a lot of other sports. Started doing some things for Sports Illustrated, and Sports Illustrated was very big on lighting. You know, mm -hmm. the, the quality of film in the 1980s uh, was not that great, mm -hmm. and uh, so to raise the quality, um, uh, lighting was brought in. My Olympic involvement took me overseas, and I think that's something that really helped sort of develop my character, personality in some ways in that well, I was constantly experiencing uh, uh, foreign cultures, different cities, different people. I think going to Russia hmm. a couple times was really a giant eye-opener. I'm 61, mm -hmm. so I grew up in the Cold War era. I would have never guessed I would be in the basement of the Kremlin in a gift store buying my wife and my daughter a gift. So, did it have something to do with photography? Yes, in the sense of that was the vehicle that sure. that got me places. That's the cool thing about photography. Mm. It takes you and I and those who take pictures to places that other people don't go. Mm. And that, in and of itself, is such an extraordinary uh, feeling that makes you feel alive. It's quite a passport to the world. It, yeah. It is. How has it been with your family over the years, you, you being in a, the photography career? My daughter is a photographer. Nice. Go figure, you know, who would have <laughs> thought? And uh, I actually always thought she would have ended up as a, a photo editor. Um, she had this ability from a very young age, I mean young, like eight, nine years old or so, oh. and she would come in and survey all the slides out on the light table. I would say, well, Haley, I'd say, why don't you pick out the cover for me? Awesome. She would, she'll go, I need the loop. <laughs> oh, that's she needs awesome. the loop, you know, the magnifying loop, so she can, you know, get right down. And she, <laughs> would, she would bear down on the slide transparency. She'd get right down there and be looking at them. And I said, "Tell, give me the cover of uh, whoever the athlete might be." I said, "I need a John Elway or something." She would look. This one right here. And bo if she wasn't right, that's amazing. You know, like almost she would pick the same one I would pick, and very often pick the same one that the editors would pick. They see you as a sports guy in arenas and, and football fields, right? But, but you'll take the grand landscape and, and light it up. I mean, you're a real artist in that regard. Light painting became part of my sort of daily thinking mm -hmm. and, and business around 1998, 99. And um, light painting had been around. It was more called painting with light. Mm -hmm. And advertisers, uh, advertising photographers would use it to do what I would say small things. Wine glasses, wine bottles for a, a, a brochure or advertisement uh, hmm. for a company, something like that, something rather small. And it was usually done with a product called the Hose Master. You know, yeah, I know everybody smiles. The Hose Master, what yeah, is that? Yeah. yeah, and it was a fiber optic projection system of light. Funny, huh? It had self timers on it and so forth. Um, it was a dreadful color of light, so you had to filtrate the light a lot. It was awful. I just thought, I don't want this thing anymore. Yeah, yeah. I want to be free and emancipated from plugging it into the wall. You know, uh -huh. so I started searching for a lot of uh, LED uh, lights. Mm -hmm. We think of them as like common everyday things, but they were just really kind of coming into yeah, their that own was, at that time. That was new stuff. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they produce a good amount of lumens, and I started doing more portable light paintings. And my graphics design background, my art my art background mm -hmm. and education lended itself well to combine with photography and light painting was the end result. It was this artistic expression of light, far different than what strobes or speed lights or arena lighting could produce. I light painted the West Mitten in Monument Valley. That was a big one. 
Hmm. The biggest one to date. The picture was uh, basically centered around uh, the U.S. captain, a fellow named Kevin Barnett, and it became the first digital leading off for Sports Illustrated and changed, hmm. uh, at that time, Jimmy Colton, photo editor, and Steve Find it changed their thinking of what digital uh, could do. The screen on the back of the camera was a mere postage stamp size. <laughs> I mean, you know, and it was like the marvel of the of the millennium uh, at the 2000 Olympics. And I was just raked over the coals by all my colleagues, friends, openly criticizing me as a traitor. You know, when I walked into wow. the, to the women's 100 meter finals, and there's 300 photographers all ganged up for the finish line, and I walked in, traitor Benedict Arnold. Jeez. You know, oh, it was it was it's ruthless. It was, it was ruthless. Yeah, wow. and I said, I'm telling you guys, you're all going to be singing from the same choir very very shortly here. I said, uh, the different. And of course, then things mm -hmm. were published and. Uh, you know, I got a, some very nice apologies. <laughs> you wow! Know, over, you know, uh, I don't know. Was there an internet back then, Paul? I, they probably <laughs> were postcards that came from another one. Email was there. Sometimes digital makes us walk away uh, too quickly. Hmm. Makes us walk away satisfied too quickly. Huh. And when it was on film and you didn't see the picture come up, you would work the moment. You would work hmm. the situation for a long period of time. You had. Uh, it was a big deal to shoot a whole roll or two rolls of film. It cost money, you know, the process that it cost money. And today, great, great minds, great creative minds, Paul, who maybe wouldn't have picked up a camera 20 years ago or 30 years ago because of the manual focus, manual ISO, manual exposure, manual lighting. Are you kidding? No TTL, no speed lights, are you kidding? They wouldn't have even picked up a camera. Hmm. And thus, we as the public, the viewers, the mm -hmm. audience, never got to see what maybe was going on inside their mind. Interesting. Mm -hmm. awesome. And we could enjoy all those pictures. So I think, you know, there are a lot of photographers my age who, you know, ah, the digital people, oh, everything's done for them. Yeah, when I got into photography, I had to walk <laughs> six miles to get a decent exposure and the snow um, uphill the both snow ways. And, uh, wind and <laughs> well dave thanks so much for joining us here on the show you're truly one of the uh one of the masters of light and one of the one of the greats not just in sports but in understanding what photography is all about this painting with light concept well paul thank you very much what a great opportunity to be here and uh how great to see you again thank you and uh, uh your photography just going great guns it's been a joy watching